Hey guys, how you doing? Hopefully better than me. Well, I got good news and I got kind of bad news. Good news, hey, look at my shirts. Ooh, black shirts, short sleeve. Tim Lohman design, you know Tim Lohman, low volts. I'm gonna give you a link to his music below. You gotta know who Tim Lohman is. Anyway, welcome to the last day of July. It is hot here. It is so hot that Acton, California, where I live, was just declared sister city of hell. Okay, guys, the topic of this episode is matchbooks and things, all things matchbooks. Now, I got a couple of questions and comments from two of my viewers, Eddie Villanueva and Joe Hunter, sent me emails and said, hey, got a couple questions, got a couple suggestions. So thank you to, um, yeah, and uh, they liked my episode. So why don't you give me a like down there and then go check out Tim Lohman and all those links down there and keep your eye on the eye things popping up here because they're going to help you with longer episodes in case this is the first time you ever figured out about matchbooks and my guitars, which means you've been living under a rock, son. Okay, so let's take a look at what I've been working on. This is the Greyhound bus guitar. It's coming right along. Mississippi bus license plate. Highway 41, rolling down Highway 41. Um, Greyhound matchbooks. Yeah, this one is turning out really cool. It's one of my theme guitars. And um, you know what I think? I think you're gonna see this one hanging up on the wall up there in a little bit. And when you see this hanging on the wall, that means it's for sale. Now, I'm going to want to keep this one, I know, because it's that cool, but it all depends on how much money y'all got. So start digging out those couch cushions and check it under them floor mats. And yeah, just whatever you need to do to start thinking about you being the one that says, hey, I got this. Now, put the matchbooks on the neck here, and I'm going to share some things with you about that. Now I'm going down a different road. And you're going to see this one called the Mississippi Junk Pile. I have a flat top that I'm redoing. And its theme is going to be Mississippi. Maybe that's why it's called the Mississippi Junk Pile. Uh-huh. Anyway, what I've done so far on this is I have, look at the headstock. That's pretty cool. This one's got a truss rod. Oh, look at that aged chick flick. Teal. Now I've completely ruined it and turned it from a six string into a four string and plugged it. It's very obvious where I plugged it. And then of course I put my wood in those holes right there. So I'm going to match book this neck. Now you see that this neck is wider than this neck. And so I'm going to be able to use a graphic file uh, once I, I scan these and be able to size the matchbooks and broaden them out and lengthen them out to be able to work here because it's an important part of my theme. Anyway, while doing this, I'm going to show you a couple little hints about why I do this the way I do, why I don't use real matchbooks, and how you can end up in a bind if you do. So, let's hit the bench. All right. Hey, you see that right there? Uh-huh. Hey, deck screw hater. I got a message for you, son. Oh, didn't that make you feel special? Hey, what are you doing? I see you. No, no, not the pretty one. You, you right there. I see you eyeballing my secret template. You knock it off. You don't even worry about that. Pay attention to your own stuff. All right, before we get going in here, let me give you a little background here. There is a long episode called Matchbooking or something like that. I'm going to give you an iCard link. So click on that I up there towards the end. You don't want to miss any of this critical content. But the moral of the story here is we take real matchbooks like this. And, you know what, I'm going to put that up in Coveter's Corner because once you saw that, you're going to hate seeing 
Ooh, look at all these. These are real matchbooks, and I got them arranged like this is the Mississippi section. This is the Greyhound bus section. This is the Holly Springs, Mississippi section. I got all kinds of sections except section eight. Anyway, we take these matchbooks that are starting to get real expensive. You want to find something on this, like this on eBay, you might be paying $4, you might be paying eight, 10, $12. Now, if you glue this on a, on a neck, it's history, you're done. You can't use it on another guitar. And so that's why we've taken up digitizing them, putting them on white inkjet decal paper. Now you always want to use white, again, refer to that episode up there, because if you use clear, it doesn't work out so well. So you scan this onto this, and then you coat it with clear, let it dry, and then you put you do this like you did a, a, on an airplane model or something when you were a kid. But in addition to not burning up the original matchbooks that are getting hard to find, there is a technical issue with using a thick matchbook on something that has fairly shallow frets and burning up the space on your fingerboard and making in other words, your fingerboard higher. So you're already like so. I think you can you can see there. There's not a lot of room right there in this area here. And when you start burning it up with the thickness of that, what do you know? You're almost at the top of your fret. Then if you put a coating on it, it gets worse. The coating gets on top of your your frets, and then you got a mess, and you got string buzz and all kinds of stuff. So we're going to use this to kind of show you what I'm talking about. But first, we're going to take a look at how thick are these things and what, what's the big deal if you use these or these outside of cost and about spraying and finishing them. Because we all know that fretboards get a lot of work out. You up close, Bob Log the third's fretboard, you're going to see it's all dug out, especially up in here and down here. It's rotted out. And that ain't no model airplane. This stuff is going to get wore out, so you got to coat it. So let's take a look at the technical aspects and how you finish out one of these. Okay, so first thing, we're going to take a look at these matchbooks that I put on here. You can't tell that they're not real matchbooks, see? Like so. Now, how did that happen? Let's flip this back over. And we'll kind of use that as a background there. Let's try that. So first thing we do is maybe use painter's tape and put the real matchbooks on a piece of cardstock. You want to put them on there straight, make sure everything's stable. And then you just flip this over and scan it. Again, there's an episode up there. You know what, I'm gonna give you another card called graphics and it kind of shows you how to do this too. Um, but anyway, check those out. It talks about how to size things on the computer because the computer's got a grid and you can measure okay this is eight and a half this is eleven and you can actually um, measure all that out but anyway you end up with on a piece of this again white inkjet paper don't forget that you end up with this and then we spray this three times with some time in between and that's going to give us our decals okay oh I'm excited about this one I am actually going to match book this neck and we're going to use this one as an example kind of tell you why you wouldn't want to use real matchbooks even if you had a ton of them and you could afford to throw money away um, let me get this set up and we'll take a closer look All right first let's talk about fret wire now you guys that are building fretless guitars don't worry you'll get there someday anyway fret wire comes in different dimensions or sizes this is medium high this is jumbo now on fret wire there's this thing called a tang and this is the part that sits up above the fingerboard or fretboard here and um, if you use jumbo your frets would stick up higher than if you use medium high or um, a, uh, uh, a shorter type uh, but the main thing is that you need to know is how tall is this stuff because that's going to 
give you some idea of how much room there is between here and the top of your fret. If there is no room there, or they're all the same, when you go to push your finger down to fret, because face it guys, no one is using a slide all day long. Do not covet my slide, but no one's using a slide all day long. They want to use, they want to do some fretting and then work the slide in. But if you've got everything stacked up in here where this level is the same and you go to push your finger down, you're not going to get a clean uh, guitar string coming across there and the sound isn't going to be good. You're going to have fret buzz and we all know that anybody can make a cigar box guitar, but to make one playable has a lot to do with the height of the strings. And that's been my biggest challenge. Okay, so here are two original Matchbooks Union News Greyhound lines. Um, most of these places, a cafe was a good place to have somebody stop and read a newspaper and, and get something to eat before the bus got there. And speak of eating, how would you like to eat at Lay's Cafe? I think I'd like to eat there, right? So anyway, I took these two and digitized them. And if you look, there's a difference between the thickness of the digital copy and the original matchbook. So what does all that mean? Well, I'll tell you what that means. It means that you're going to need qualification or quantification or some kind of vacation of that these are thinner than these real matchbooks. I know you ain't going to take my word for it. Bambi chub? What's that? Anyway, you're going to need something like this fancy gadget. Now, when I turn this on here, let's see what happens. Oh, look. It's got millimeters and inches. So I can go back and forth between millimeters and inches. How you like that, metric hater? <laughs> well, guess what? I got something else you ain't gonna like much. All right, wasn't that great? Bob Log the Third is a good dude, especially when he starts paying attention to the likes of you, Metric Hater. Anyway, where were we? So I got this gadget, and oh, by the way, this is a good thing when you're trying to figure out, oh, how much does the fingerboard stick up above the neck? You see that? I just push down on that like that, and then it tells me, oh, that much. 12.1 millimeters and then I go over to my router table and I set this down like this and I crank the router bit up till it just touches that and it's got a, a little set screw to hold it and everything and then you can you can like we're going to do now we want to zero this thing out so we're just going to push this down like so till it's there and now we're going to push this to make it zero out now, when it does that, now I can figure out how much room is there actually between the fret board and the fret. So I can swing this around and adjust it until I go like that. And what do you know? It's about two and a half millimeters between the fret board, the top of the fret board right there and the top of the fret okay so why is that important so i'm going to take this now this original matchbook and lay it there right next to this paul miro junk pile guitars california logo and now you're going to be brainwashed like the theater with popcorn you're going to want to buy one of these shirts that you saw at the beginning anyway i'm going to put this back down I'm going to zero it out again, like so. And then I am going to put this over this matchbook. And look at that. It is almost three quarters of a millimeter. So before I even do anything, put any uh, uh, adhesive on here or whatever, I'm almost at a millimeter, right? And so once I do that, I'm about halfway. I've used up the space here between here and the top of the fret. And I really don't want to do that because I got to somehow uh, 
coat these so they're durable. So let's figure out what happens if I use this to copy. Okay, now again, I'm going to zero this thing out. I'm going to push that down. I'm going to do that till it says zero. And then I'm going to measure the thickness of the decal. Oh, look at that. It's one quarter of the thickness that the original matchbook was. But hey, I got news for you. A bunch of that is this backing that's going to come off. So I got virtually nothing in space that I'm going to eat up between here and here by using this. And that's going to become really important. Now I want to tell you, if you don't have one of these fancy Wixie gadgets, you should get one for your router table and all that. But if you don't have one of these, you can use one of these micrometer or something. They they are, are pretty cheap and durable and you can use them for all kinds of things like measuring string height and all kinds of stuff. I think they have these at a hardware store uh, pretty commonly and I think there's a hardware st store right next to Lay's Cafe, Padna. Okay, so the first thing I've done is made a mock-up. Now this is different than a markup unless you're in New Jersey or New York. And then it's the same thing, a mock-up. How you doing, Jack Merluzzo? Shout out to you, buddy. All right, next step. Fortunately, I've worked in a very cultured environment in my day job, and I've learned the finer things in life. So I'm going to take some water out of my crave here, and I'm going to need this water to... Oh, yeah, do not covet my crave. Uh, I'm going to need this water to activate these decals. I want to make sure that I've cut the decals the width of the fingerboard like this, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to turn this over like this and put it like so. And I'm going to use that fret as a line. You see that right there? And I'm going to put a number one on this. And I'm going to go over here. You want to know why I did the number one? Because that's the first one. Profound things you don't learn here. Then I'm going to line up them two lines of cut just right outside them with my chick flick teal scissors. Just like that. I'm going to drop that in there. And then I'm going to find out which one I cut. Now this one's a little bit bigger, so I'm going to do the same thing. Same thing, and I do two, and I cut this, and I keep doing this. You don't want to be running back and forth doing things over and over. Guess what comes next? That's right, three. Now, if you're running 22 frets on a 25 and a half scale fingerboard, oh, I almost forgot to write three. Well, that would have been disastrous. Anyway, if you got 20, 21, 22 frets, you're going to burn up five of these standard size matchbooks. So keep that in your box of tricks. All right, so we got our decals soaking in the water. And now we got some choices to make. We need to attach these to the uh, fingerboard, but I'm not going to depend on the, the sticky that's on there or something. I want to use something to put this stuff on. Now, we've got a couple of choices we can use. We can use Mod Podge. I mean, this was your grandma's choice, and of course this is Mrs. Olson's choice. God, I love Mrs. Olson. Check out the episode up there. So, just put it over here so she can watch. Keep eye on. Sorry, Rosebud, but you're gonna have to go. Mrs. Olson has hit the scene now. Anyway, I also like this product, Earl Lube Paste. What's going on, Bubba? I'm going to use this. I'm going to shake this up. This stuff goes a long ways. Now, you'll notice that when I shake this, some ends up on the lid like this. Now, what I have to do is I have to decide. Remember, the whole idea is we don't want to get a bunch of stuff on these frets, and then we have to sand them down with one of these gadgets. You ever see one of these? Oh, yeah, that's... Good deal. You want to know about these? Send me an email. I'll tell you where to get them. But 
So let's say I use this house painter's brush and I try to slop this on here like this. It's going to get all over the place. I need to keep control of this stuff. Even this one, I don't like these brushes. It's nice and thin and you get in there, but these hairs fall off. And uh, I'm 60 years old. I don't know what it's like to lose hair, but I guess some people do. So anyway, I'm going to take this like this. I'm going to take a little bit of Earl Lube paste. See how flat that brush is. And I'm just going to run parallel with that like so. Okay, I'm not going to get it up there. Now I'm going to find number one. Ooh, something happened to number one. You see that? No, that's the way the matchbook was because it takes on the character of that. So I'm going to put that right there. I'm going to spit on a little bit to move it around like your grandma used to do with your hair in church when it was doing the Dennis the Menace, like so. I want to make sure that that's not riding up there on that fret. Anyway, I'm just going to take this like so. Again, parallel. Don't want to get it all over that fret, okay? I'm going to get it there like that. And these brushes that are flat like this really work out. You know where to get them? Yeah, your wife's craft box. That's right. You don't need to buy this stuff yourself. Be frugal. Now, I'm going to look over here and say, let me see. The fretboard is going to work that way. I'm going to put this one like so. What do you know? I should have started up there goes like this okay like so we'll put that like there we'll march all the way down the fingerboard just like that all right we're on the last one here again I'm being very careful not to get any of that stuck to the fret put that on there Pull that into shape. We're going to let that dry a little bit, and we're going to we're going to rub it, and we're going to pat it, and we're going to mark it with a B for baby and me. Hell yeah! Anyway, looks like that. All right, we've let this dry a bit. I want to remember that this is a lot thinner. Than a regular matchbook so we've done good there and we've put a layer of this earl lube paste dude i might as well be your advertising director hello anyway we are going to put one more coat of this on here and again we want to do it nice and smooth don't get too much on your brush like that more is not always better you're going to go along like this Again, you don't want it on that fret. You can go off and you're going to coat this because this is what's going to seal this in to make it stick like so. Okay? But guess what? It's not going to be strong enough to be having somebody running their fingers over the frets for years. So guess what we're going to do to make that work? We're going to get some polyurethane or or some something rather and we're going to spray this stuff over this and we'll make it nice and shiny right and seal it right wrong so hey I want you to think this out you're going to get this like this it's all ready to go and you're going to take this uh, clear gloss and you're going to spray it and it's going to be real shiny and it's going to be protect all this stuff stay in place forever so you're going to give it another coat another coat and guess what you're putting a coat on here but you're also hitting these frets and you get this stuff built up on the frets and then the next thing you know it dawns on you wait a minute i got buzz going on and everything so then you finally figure out well you know what i got all this spray on the top of my frets and now I got to remove it so you get one of these your razor knife your fret file whatever you're doing you're sitting here all day like this 
and every minute that you saved trying to be slick protecting and shining with this is going to come back to haunt you and fret work so you're doing this so i got a better idea it's okay to use this kind of stuff but you want to get it in a can like this now i'm going to use shellac what you want to do is you want to make sure that whatever you used here whether it's earl lube paste or or uh, mod podge that it goes together because some of this stuff will mess up and you'll you'll have all this work into your fretboard and stuff and it'll discolor it or it'll eat through the ink that you use on your inkjet or laser jet or whatever you use so you want to make sure that you do a little test with this stuff you want to shake it up a little bit and then you want to do the same thing that you did when you were covering the decals and sticking them onto the fretboard and that is you don't use something like this or even something like this you go back to one of these flat little brushes like this and this stuff is see it's very the viscosity of this stuff is thin viscosity oil field mud logger term oil term what would we do without the oil fields anyway you see how that is and then i'm just going to very carefully do this like so and i may do this a couple of times but you can see that i'm being real careful and look at how that's starting to pop too you don't want to get sloppy on this you want to make sure you get those edges that's where the wear is going to be from the slide and stuff. Anyway, you just do that. Stay off them frets. And next thing you know, this is covered. The amount of space that you've used up between your top of your fretboard and the bottom of your, or the top of your fret is minimal. And you get this look that makes people go i mean tell me that somebody doesn't want to get that instead of i mean our stuff is junk anyway right why not make it look real yard sale -y? but that's how you do it use shellac don't get too much stuff on here and make it too thick because once this lays in here and hardens up this is going to be a durable surface it, it doesn't matter if this wears off a little bit it'll give it character but you don't want your fret wires all marred up with this stuff because it will come back to haunt you every time hey you hear that that's some dude named cody harrell you've seen him sneaking in my episodes here and there do you know who he is really dude you will i guarantee you you will that's cody with a k harrell h-a-r-r-e-l-l -L. Take those thumbs of yours, the ones that are opposing, and Google that. You want to know this dude anyway. That's some music that he's playing by himself, and he's got a fancy set of pedals. But that right there, people, is the Sun House guitar that you have been coveting. So, yeah, it is in North Mississippi where y'all want to be on your next vacation when the festivals kick back up. Anyway, that is Cody Harrell. I want to tell you that in addition to being an awesome guitar player, he is an engineer. No, not a train engineer. An engineer that figures out why that outhouse you built is going to fall down if you don't reinforce it properly. Anyway, he, um, when he got the Sunhouse guitar, did some setup on it and used these gadgets to kind of help me along with my string action. So shout out to you, Cody, and we're going to tail out this episode listening to this but anyway so hit it Cody we got the mark up here it's always good to keep uh, fine instruments calibrated by dropping them on the floor while you're making a man that's some Jimi Hendrix right there anyway we got a mock-up done and um, wouldn't that be a great door handle yeah Do that too right I got stuff collapsing all over around me. Anyway, so the moral of the story here is 
<laughs> Good job, Cody. Anyway, back to reality. There's plenty of room between this matchbook and the top of the fret where it's not going to mar up your action. You're going to get crisp pressed down when you fret. So this turned out nice. Now, you're going to want to keep your eye out because we're going to matchbook this puppy and you are going to see it fairly soon. So, I'm going to get to work on that. And unlike you, I'm going to listen to Cody for the rest of the day. Yeah, that is it. That is so it. Anyway, I'm going to try to get him to do a video or something so you all can see it. And God knows what you'll covet then. Give me a like below and check out all my links. Support these people and I will see you next time. Oh, that's not Cody. That's me playing it. Can you hear it? Yeah, there are strings on here. Never mind. You pay attention to what you're doing.